We turn now to 1 Timothy in chapter 3, verse 1. It is a trustworthy statement. If any man aspires to the office of overseer, it is a fine work he desires to do. We were considering last week what this meant, to aspire to a position of eldership in the church of God, and the responsibilities, the qualifications for such eldership in verses 2 and 3. And we saw that the emphasis was primarily on character and maturity, not on knowledge or smartness of personality and other equally stupid things that people look for these days when they look for one who is to be a leader. No, it's not human personality. It's not a question of cleverness or smartness or Bible knowledge, but rather of character that cannot be questioned, of freedom from the love of money, for example. And then we see in verse 4 an emphasis on his home. He must be one, this is essential, who rules or presides or manages his own family well. Now this is a very important qualification. He must be married, the husband of one wife, and be one who manages his own family well. If a man's house is in a mess, if he can't keep his wife under control, and he can't keep his children under control, that clearly indicates that he is just not fit to be an elder in the church of God. And if only more Christian churches would follow this rule, I believe that God would be honored in our country. It would write off many people who are in Christian work today, and the sooner they leave Christian work and go into some secular occupation, the better it would be for them. The sooner such elders resign from their positions, the better it would be for the Christian church in our land. Those who cannot control their own house, it says in verse 5, cannot take care of the church of God. That's so clear. If a man doesn't know how to take care of his own little family, how can he take care of something as important as God's church? The family is so small, the church is so much larger. The family is an earthly matter and the church is spiritual. How can he take care of something far bigger and far more important if he can't prove himself in a small situation? If we are not faithful in the little, we are not fit to be entrusted with more. That's a simple rule. And it's quite logical for Paul to say that, that if a man doesn't know how to make his own family behave, he cannot take care of the church of God. It says in verse 4 that he must be one who can keep his children in subjection with all decorum and control. Keep his children well behaved, thoroughly well behaved. Now anyone who is in any type of Christian work or in any type of Christian leadership, is there a preacher to other people? Here is a good question for you to ask yourself. How do your children behave? It is a sad testimony that the children of many Christian workers are notorious for bad behavior. Well, that indicates that their parents have not cared to understand the Word of God. Any Christian worker whose children are accused of misbehavior or who cannot make his children obey would do well to stop preaching and give up preaching for a while and set his own house in order. That's the way to honor God. Otherwise, if we continue in the way, in the God-dishonoring way that so many people continue today, it can only end up in a spiritual Babylon. It can only end up in building that which will finally be burnt up with as wood, hay, and straw in the final day. No, God desires quality in his work. And he would rather have no leaders than leaders who are substandard and without respect for God's word. It's very clear that he, the elder must be one who can manage his own household well, keeping his children under control with all dignity, and if he doesn't have this qualification, he's totally, totally unfit to take care of the church of God. And here is where many, many preachers and elders need to examine their life and humble themselves and have their priorities right. This is a passage of scripture which clearly indicates 
that the Lord's work does not come before our home. There are many people, preachers and full-time Christian workers today, who consider the Lord's work as more important than their own home. And so they travel and travel and travel and travel in the Lord's work and neglect their own home. And after a few years, their home is a perfect spiritual mess with their children unruly and they are not able to control their wives or children. Yet they continue their traveling ministry. They have got their order all mixed up. They have been deceived by the devil to disregard their home. The order for the true Christian worker is to put God first, his home second, and God's work third, because God's work is dependent on our home. Just like God is the foundation of everything, and so we need to begin with him. Likewise, our home and the way we conduct ourselves in our home is what qualifies us to serve the Lord. Consider Jesus himself for 30 years. He was in his home, and there he was faithful. And then the Father sent him out into a public ministry. And so is the order for all who are elders and shepherds in the new covenant, that they must be able to take care of their home if they are to be qualified to serve the Lord. And then he goes on to say in verse 6, that an elder must not be a new convert. He must not be a young believer, even if he's got Bible knowledge. It's very wrong and dangerous to put young people up into positions of leadership. Any type of leadership in the church, if they have not been given time to grow into maturity. Because when he's a new convert, what is the temptation? The temptation is of spiritual pride. New converts have a greater battle with pride than those who are more mature. Everyone can be tempted to pride, but especially younger believers. So we have a responsibility to protect younger believers from spiritual pride and not put them into positions of leadership where they will be exposed to temptation to spiritual pride more than other people. And so it says, not a new convert, lest he become conceited. Conceited? because of this position of responsibility that he has and the authority that he has. And there is a warning for all who are in positions of responsibility and who have authority, not just new converts, but everyone, that we are in great danger of being conceited. And if we are careful to watch against this danger, we can be protected. Otherwise, if we get conceited, it says in verse 6 that we can fall into the condemnation incurred by the devil. Now, the devil became the devil through pride. It was pride that made an angel into a devil. And then the same sentence that came upon the angel that made him the devil can cannot come upon the one who has fallen through spiritual conceit, even if he is an elder. Now, this is a very serious passage of Scripture which indicates that with God there is no respect of person. Just because a man is in Christian work or because a man is in some type of spiritual leadership, does not mean that God will spare him when he becomes spiritually proud. The Bible says that God resists the proud. 1 Peter 5, verse 5. That's clear. Anyone who is proud, God will resist him, even if he's an elder in a church. And when God resists him, he has no alternative but to fall. And what will he fall into? We are told that very clearly in 1 Timothy 3, 6. He will fall into the judgment that came upon the devil. The same condemnation. And condemnation is a strong word. To come under the condemnation of God is terrible. And that's why we need to be particularly careful, those of us who are in Christian leadership, to watch out against spiritual pride. And then he gives one more qualification in verse 7. He says, an elder must be one who has a good reputation with those who are outside the church. In other words, he must have a good testimony from the outsiders too. It's not enough that the people in the church bear with him and put up with him, but he must have a good testimony in the neighborhood. And if we do not have a good upright testimony in the neighborhood, then we are unfit to be elders in the church. 
For example, if you are the type of person who borrows money and doesn't return it, it's clear that you're unfit to be an elder in the church. You must have a good testimony that you keep your word, that if you return anything you borrow as soon as possible, and a very good testimony in this way from the outsiders. Otherwise, again, you can fall into reproach. People will begin to slander you and you can be involved in slander and thus get caught in the devil's snare. Elders have to be particularly careful that they don't get trapped in people getting an opportunity to slander them because of some carelessness in their external testimony. Be particularly careful about your external testimony if you're in any type of Christian work or leadership that the devil doesn't get an advantage and try to bring you down by some foolish action of yours that's lost your testimony externally. Let's emphasize once again what we've been saying from the beginning, that the emphasis in spiritual eldership and authority in the church is not on knowledge, but on character.